Good morning, good morning everybody. Welcome to my early morning creative stream. Let me just change my chat box size because that's going to come in really small with the text unless I change that. So let's save the settings on those. There we go, that should be a bit bigger. Excellent. So this morning, this morning we have obviously our druid cat form. Let me just zoom the camera out a little. Actually, no, I can see this here. So this is the model viewer which we looked at from earlier. Now I've got my drawing here, which is bigger scale. Now looking at it, actually let's just zoom that out a little bit because we don't quite have everything there. Um, let's just move that out. Configure the video. Um, move that down and then change the zoom out a little bit so we can see things there we go you can see things a bit better then now the thing I've noticed looking at this after a week's break let's move my keyboard over hold on let's move that right over here the trouble with sitting down sometimes is you run out of space so looking at this, I've gone almost off the page trying to get my tail in, which I think is kind of ruining it a little bit. What I want to do is just push the hips out a little bit more and make this, because this comes up and over to the back here, and I've got mine slunk down quite low. So I'm thinking I'm just pulling this section back a little bit more because I'm not too happy with the way that's just pushing too close to the edge of the paper so I'm not framing any white space around it so I don't think it's going to work so well so I'm going to take this one off Ah, good morning Costa, how are you? Thanks for stopping by How's your Saturday morning shaping up? Let's take all that down. Let's take it all out. We're going to redo that back end. Just to see if we can rectify it. To be a little bit more like the back drawing. So in terms of hips, a bit of shadow coming across there. Let's just pull the light down. Pull the light in a bit more there. Let's get some extra light coming in. There we go, that's a bit better. Just takes that shadow out of my hand. And then let's move this one around. Doing okay, thank you very much. A little bit, um, a little bit uh, chaotic this morning, but we managed to get it all sorted. So we're back in the, back in the swing of things. Slightly later starting than I originally scheduled and planned. So, right, sometimes I think this is because I'm I'm too close to the drawing. I can't look back and have a have a proper idea as to how it's going to look. But I'm thinking pulling this down and the the back end to be up more here and then take the tail off still keep it curved but curve it more more round here so I get a bit more space at the side is the plan there something like that I'm going for and then I'm going to curl the tail a bit more upwards and then we can put the spike in, that's a little bit contrived actually 
um, coming back and following this line. But let's 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 actually use some of this, and let's go back on the shoulder. Let's bring the shoulder up instead, and then have the, sh the have the tail just poking out behind it. And then we got some depth because that's layered behind that, like that. And then this is going to come down, down the back. The back hackles is going to be down here. Right, how's that looking? Let's just hold this up a little bit more. Now the problem with that, because the tail here is so high, it looks like he's spraying, which isn't really the look I wanted to go for. So let's have another rethink of that. We don't want the tail to be so high. So we're going to fold it behind a bit more. Ideally, I'd have more, more paper. So I'm going to go with that. So we've got we've got the curve there, and that way, actually, we can do a bit more this side. There we go. There's something we can use because now we're coming out the back here, and we're not interfering with the with the hackles and we can come back out there with the spiky end so we double back on ourselves a big deep S that's going back that way and then I can take this off just trying to re rework this now before I go into the details better to do it now whilst I've got the space and just using the blue pencil than doing anything higher up. Okay, that's... That's more balanced, I think. Because that gives us the tail without it looking like he's spraying and that line is nice and curvy and then that line there is nice and curvy and then we're going to have the end of the tuft of the tail like that something i know you can't see it so easily on the uh on the camera view because i'm still working with blue pencil but i think this is going to be It's going to be better that way. Okay, happy with that now. There we go. Ah, there we are. I was thinking about that, thinking it just didn't look right. Alright, so onwards and upwards. Let's start with some more details. In we, well, I've got a couple of things we could do. We could do the, we could do this back paw, or we could carry on with the the main. I think I might carry on with the main and the shoulder armor, because that's going to give us a nice bit of uh, detail here. Put all of this to color in or shade in rather. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, the head's, the head's certainly coming together now. I'm wanting to just car carry this one through the shoulders and everything. There is, certainly is coffee in the cup. Freshly filled coffee number two for today, which at least should get us uh, through the morning. We might have to move on to coffee number three though before the end of the stream. Let's see how we go. That might be <laughs> That might be living a little too dangerously. Apologies if the washing machine in, in the background gets too loud. Hopefully my microphone won't pick it up too much. Um, okay, so I'm looking 
I'm looking up here. I'm looking at the details they've got on on this shoulder pad and how I'm going to do mine slightly more angled. So my line is coming down here. Let's move that, swap those over so we can see the two shoulders together. There we are. So this one, this has got a a thing that comes down. like that and then we've got a, a baseline there and then the central groove comes up to meet that and that's going to come all the way down there Okay, and then there's a circle here, which is kind of like a chiseled ring because it's got it's got some depth to it with the glowing bit in the, in the center, which I'm going to have to avoid. And then I can do the outer section. Struggle sometimes to get curves, especially when you're doing that with your fingers. Curves are harder to, to draw. It's easier to do a stroke round like that, which is why I often turn the paper to do full circles. Sometimes just use the wrist to get a ring like that. And then this is chiseled again. So the lines coming from there. going to give that depth that's going to come in and then follow this line round all the way actually so I'm just going parallel with this line and then the same down there and then this side can be a little bit thinner because it's going further away and this side can be even thinner because that's just catching the edge and then for this side is just going to go down to meet that try not to get it too fluffy the line ideally I'd like it cleaner than that hey Bart 2 how are you thanks for stopping by How's your Saturday? How's the sales on Shadow Song going? I've not checked myself in a while, so hopefully they're doing well. There we go, we're gonna just follow that. That echoes the, the, the line we've got here coming along and then down into the grooves like that and then slight point to this end because then it comes there's another line that follows this line all the way down to that like that I've been too active the last couple of days, but I had about uh, 15k so far today. Oh, that sounds good. That's promising. There we go. 
That's a little bit more detail in where all these chisels and bits go. There's still some more around here actually. Just need to run that line round. Into the edge. Like that. Um, oh, we've got some sky golems coming up. Excellent. Let's see if you can get a good price for those. I've noticed on Undermine Journal there was they were for they had like um up to five on at any one time. So it'll be interesting to see what the competition's like on that. Yeah, get some crafting done definitely. Just making sure you've got the materials nice and cheap, obviously. Right, we're still in line mode here. We need to start thinking about shading mode. Well, there's also those swirly things. There's a couple of little um, swirly patterns just in here, which is going to help make it a bit more druidic. Yeah, that comes in round, and then it becomes a big swirl right in the middle. Like that. There we go. Tempted to save them for BFA. This is true, actually. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people um, coming back. That goes there. And this is squashed, so. So it goes like that. I mean, it's one of those things, the Sky Golems, isn't it? There's the temptation, because they're on such a long... Um, my helicopter's taking off. Hey, Jack, how are you? Let me just pull the door close for my um, washing machine. Hold on. There we go. Yes, <laughs> my flying washing machine is taking off in the background. Hopefully that's a lot more muffled now. Hey Lord Bosch, how are you? This is not wow. It is a druid cat form, Lord Bosch. So we're still sticking with the theme of World of Warcraft. And this is my morning creative stream. I usually like to do on a Saturday morning if I can. So we stick with the WoW theme and we talk about gold making. So we still keep the theme of WoW, very much so. But with the extra bonus of a bit of creative drawing thrown in. Hey Panzalus, how are you? Thanks for stopping by. How's everyone's Saturday so far? I've got quite a lot of space between these two. So I need to do the chiseled extra bit that's coming out of here to give this depth. Which is going to be there. And then that's That's where it's got the depth, so it goes narrow here, and then wide there. And then we're going to do a thin line underneath here, because we don't have a lot of room. And then we're going to do a big old line out here, and give that a little bit of extra. Leveling your third alchemist and second engineer. Wow, this is amazing, uh, Jack. That's a good number of professions there. Uh, doing very well, thank you very much. Just slowly building up caffeine levels to an acceptable point with our coffee today. And 
at least getting started on this side of the armor. We reworked the back end because I wasn't happy with the tail earlier. That was the first thing I did because I'm running out of space on the edge of the page, which was uh, down to poor planning on my part. So I've kind of corrected it by pulling the tail back in now to give it a bit more depth. And that should hopefully give us enough room to carry on with the rest of the um, the rest of the drawing. Got to think, um, where are we at now? Got to think this mane in the background. I think. I might have to put a bit of paper over the top. And then we'll just do this. Like that. And then how much are we going to have this hair coming down? There's a one here. Like that. And then I want another tuft coming out. Like that. So I can then do another one coming behind. Like that. Um, won all three Master Alchemists and both Engineer Specializations. Yes, because there's um, there's Goblin and Gnome versions of the Engineering. Do you have to be a Goblin or a Gnome to specialise in those? Or can Gnomes do Goblin and Goblins do Gnomes? I've not been an Engineer for a long time, so I can't remember how it works. Uh, should get more alchemists. You have four transmute masters and two elixir ones. Wow. I mean, that's down to maybe the cooldowns, isn't it? Is utilizing those as much as possible. Let's use my phone and speakers. Okay, let's just respond to my text and I'll come back to you. Yeah. Definitely more engineers. You've got three. Wow. That is loads. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, you can get both engineer specializations. Okay, that's cool. Good to know for when I do that myself. I'll be a long while before I'm in, in a situation where I've got more than one profession character. I'm just struggling enough to get one of each character at the moment. Now this is a bit of a mess when it comes to um, working out where this fur is. So let's just clean this up a little bit and work out where these fur lines for the... Now this is the shoulder, so we actually want this up higher than it's got here at the moment. So I'm going to run this back for another level. Um, I want that. I want this to turn up a little bit more, so I'm going to turn these up into sort of more more hackles like that. Okay. Um, trying to level your mining, um, it's a slow way. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a tricky one, isn't it? You just got to you just got to keep on mining, haven't you? That's the only way, really. Uh, uh, good morning, Sherbert Sam. How are you? Herbing was hell too, was it? Yeah, I think it's... Yeah, because it's a gathering profession, unless you spend a long time gathering, it does take a while. So 
So here I've got some more shoulder stuff coming through. And again, I want to do a bit more depth here up the back. There we go. Um, people are seriously undercutting medallions of the Legion today. Oh, I've noticed that part too. Sometimes they really go really, really low. And I'm, I wonder why. There's no real need for it. Thank you very much, Sherbet Sam. We're, we're working on just getting this um, mane looking a bit, bit more bulky at the moment. So I'm just re, reworking my tufts. Those are big clumps. So we're going for going for the, the clumpy look here, definitely. Um, done with herbalism. I only need mining, uh, dual crafting, engineering. Oh, that's not bad. That's a pretty good progression there. I look forward to getting into that kind of state myself. Herbalism and alchemy is my next two. Now that Earthen has got um, 800 on skinning and leatherworking, I'm going to swap over to Jawakening and do more on the more on the herbing and the alchemist side of things. Um, how long does my drawings normally take? Well, Cranky Yank, the Naga one we did took 16 hours in total, if you add up all my stream times for that one. Um, that's not unusual for me, um, for, for one of these detailed drawings to take that long. I mean, the actual sketch itself can be really quick, um, but then I, I spend a lot of time noodling the details, which is the part I really enjoy. So that's where I, that's where most of the hours get um, locked down. Okay, we're going to go there a little bit smaller, and then there, and then the back. At least want some of the back to be solid. Because the fur's the fur's getting slightly smaller here, and then it's coming back up here with another tuft, like that. Um, oh, someone's stockpile. Well, twenty-eight. That's a load, Bart. Two loads. There we go. Uh, for mining, I recommend ghost iron to level. Lots of precious stock with better value than the current one. You did two hundred to six hundred yesterday. Oh, how long did that? How how long was that, Sherbert Sam? How many hours did you spend getting to that point? Because that's promising at least for El Morty, my, my um, death knight, who's going to be doing doing the, um, the mining side of things. There we go. That's, that's the core line I've just drawn in this back spine area, which is I wanted to nail down a bit more so that I've got that that planned out at least. You farmed 2,000 ghost iron. It took you hours, okay. Two or three hours, okay, rounds, round and round the Veil of Eternal Blossoms, okay. That's not bad, that's promising. Okay, so let's have some more coffee. Um, so easy to mine and no fighting to distract you. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's um, I do find it quite um, the whole the whole gathering side of things. I do actually enjoy. I I enjoy exploring zones that I haven't been to in a long time. Um, that's quite nice for me like I did with Bridget when I went round and looked at that Mage Royal. That was quite cool. Just just exploring somewhere new or somewhere I haven't been. You may play WoW again if someone carries you. <laughs> oh well, Lord Bosch, it's, uh, it's fairly easy to get into now, so I'd certainly uh, 
I certainly recommend it. There's so much to do. Which is what I enjoy about um, World of Warcraft. There's so much drawing to do as well, for that matter, actually. <laughs> but it takes me so long to do one drawing. Good morning, Bullsy. How are you? Thanks for stopping by. I'm doing very well here, thank you. Just going through... We've mapped out some of this back fur, so we're just going through and um, drawing in some detail. Which is... This is the bit I really like, because you can get to just follow the, the, the line of the fur strokes and draw them in. Which is really good fun. Because this is just like a great big putty tat cuddle with all this fur. Oh yeah, um, the veil is good. A small circular root, um, so good for the trillium respawns. Ah, excellent. So now we're doing this. We're doing fur with clumps within the clumps which will help give it some depth but I'm just keeping the edges light because that's what gives me my um, definition so I'm keeping the fur dark at the base where it's um, deeper and then lighter up at the tips apart from the outline which I like to just keep sharp, which helps define it. Because I'm not drawing any background or anything with this. So it is just the um, just the drawing itself. down here because that that's shadowed by the ones but in front of it which are going to be a little bit lighter like that one there which I want to get quite dark actually because that's hidden right behind this line here and this line here And then lighter there, like that. Hey, Pointy Gnome, how are you? Thanks for stopping by. How have your crazy cookie sales been? A little bit more in there. And keep that light, actually, because then we've got some contrast between that one and that one. Um, made me thinking need to wash again uh, let me do household again I don't think I need to wash again or you let me do household again not sure what you mean though Pandalus um, feverish headache oh no sorry to hear that pointy name I hope you're on the mend soon that doesn't sound fun at all uh, I had to go your stream yesterday, not sure if you'll be able to do so today. Yeah, it's uh, illness is one of those things that, you know, you, you've got to take time out to, to heal. So uh, rest up and hope to get you back on your feet soon. suitably 
it looks like he's been um, him or her has gone through the wash and is just drying with all these tufty bits of fur but I like this in terms of um, it kind of keeps the realistic stroke cartoony stuff together because it's a bit of both now this now this is going to be interesting um, this is the back one so this is going to be completely different texture to everything else so what I'm going to do is actually feathery light shading for this to try and get that um, metalness coming through so I'm using the soft edge of the pencil to try and do some shading but in a precise way because this isn't um, this isn't fur so it needs a different texture Uh, so you tested it, and Potion Luck does proc um, with Potion Master Specialization. Okay. You're in panic mode and have three characters to level and three weeks-ish pre-expansion also. Yes, sure, but Sam, I wouldn't worry too much. Just get what you done. You can done. I'm, uh, I'm in a similar position. I know I'm now not going to get them all done in time. So I'm just going to have fun doing the ones I can get done. And that will have to do. Hey Jack again, how are you? And Rhyme Rock. Thanks both for stopping by. How are you this fine Saturday morning? Welcome to my creative stream where we are drawing a druid cat form from World of Warcraft whilst also talking about World of Warcraft and gold making which is the main focus of my stream normally. a little bit darker and then lighter we're going to try and get some sort of uh, hint that this is metal coming in so you want to think how does the light play across this how do the highlights work where are the highlights where's the hard edges where's the shadow It's kind of like the thinking behind what I'm doing now, whilst also keeping the, the, the textures and the stroke sort of like long and more metal like because it's smoother. Uh, you just woke up? Okay, well, get yourself a coffee and come hang out in chat. If coffee's your thing, reminds me I must need to get myself another coffee soon. You have a full squad of 800 professions on one server and you're doing it again on another. <laughs> That's fair enough, Sherbert Sam. Do whichever you fancy. I mean, it's, it's always nice having a fresh challenge. That's the thing, is um, even though you've done it once before, there's no harm in doing something again for the extra challenge. I mean, that's what uh, Bragg was doing on his vids and utilising his knowledge and starting afresh. I'm doing this, these, these curvy lines like this to give it some nice shadow. in that detail a bit more. Uh, 
I want to keep these these lines sharp more than anything else. So that I've got something, some kind of definition going on with all the different plates and the and the um, and how they how the light comes down. So this this area here, well, you see, I've just put in the shadow, gives that a proper sense of depth because now you've got the shadow underneath this plate that's on top. But then I've made sure it's thinner here because this ridge is higher up than than this baseline which is why I've made this line here thinner to try and give it that that sense of um, depth it's all about the lighting and the layers at this point I'm going to go pretty dark here. This area is actually fur down here, but I don't want to have tufts of fur. Well, not too many, actually. I'll probably put a couple in. But I want these to be compressed more. So let's just put these in gently like that. Because then the fur's coming down here. like a hint of fur down there, something like that. Wanting to dig out your pencil, Rob, been, been a while since you drew. Yeah, I totally encourage anyone who hasn't drawn in a while, just, just do it. I mean, I did this thing a few years back where I hadn't drawn in years myself, and I'd just gotten out of practice. And so I, I gave myself a challenge, okay, draw something once a day for 60 days, doesn't matter what it is, you just have to draw something. And I really got into drawing again just by committing to that. Um, and because I, I said the rules were it doesn't matter what you draw, I felt a bit freer. And then I suddenly, as I was doing it, realised how much I love drawing animals. And then that just came through in all my all my drawings. So if you if you if you're tempted. I recommend just giving it a, giving it a go. Doesn't matter at all what things look like to start with, because the more you do it, the better you get. It, it's as simple as that. Because you're thinking, you're practicing all the time, and what you learn from one drawing, you can take on to the next. that edge a little bit more. Still a little bit flat that area but I think it gives us that sense. The main thing is this, that gives me that, that sense of um, and then I'm going to do the same here on this line because this is the, bolt, the buckle strap. So if I do a slightly curve to that that tells the eye that there's a shadow here and it's underneath what's over the top but the shape is more like this and then like that so I'm keeping that dark line there and the shadow underneath here and then that's like that Something like that. Your daughter's basing you. She's hung one of your unfinished paintings in the bathroom for you to see every day. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Is uh, 
if it's unfinished, take it down and uh, finish it off if you like it. Or just accept that it's going to be like that and uh, carry on with something new. Depends how you how you are when with finishing drawings. Sometimes I like to make sure something's finished before I go on to something else. Uh, good morning, Nanny. How are you? Thanks for stopping by. How is your Saturday? I'm going to do this bit darker, actually, because this is the fur area. So we've got some tufts coming out, hitting the light. But the rest of this should really be dark. Gonna make sure I keep doing lines for this though because this this isn't the same texture as that. Um, but that definitely needs to come down here into shadow. And then catch the light at the top. trying to keep this as smooth as possible so where I see different ridges and different shapes I'm just trying to smooth them out and then think about how metal or different things has highlights and then the odd thin line like that just to help define an edge so you're just catching that light there Now this, I'm probably going to do this way in terms of lines, so that then I can do a darker one down here, and that's going to be quite quite dark actually. Looking at that, so we need to just keep that sharp line so it doesn't get fuzzy, and then pull it in. There we go. To sorting auctions and maybe some fishing pet leveling. Oh, that sounds nice. That sounds like a nice relaxing morning. Samadan approves. Uh, damn multi streaming. <laughs> yeah, I just I struggle to cope with more than I can do two things at once. When it starts going into three or four things at once. I, I tend to drop drop the uh, attention on some of them. I just can't quite cope with that many. So I want to keep that's there, that's there. This I'm not sure what kind of oh, there's a nice highlight going on there, which I quite like. I might keep that. Keep that there because it, it really helps get this um, this area to ping a little bit by having it so light there. So I might keep that. But this this can be quite dark, I think, because we're going to do a bit of shadow around here. And I'm going to put this in a bit more shadow, I think. try and get some depth and obviously this side is probably going to be in more shadow than this side and that is going underneath but that's the glowy no this is the glowy bit okay right so we can afford to do that with that same shadow technique thicker thicker in the corners and thinner in the rest of it and that gives it that sense of I'm above you, but I'm underneath you. Have you ever done a tattoo? No, I haven't, Ryan Rock. I was talking to uh, someone the other day who's um, practicing with tattoos. It sounds like an interesting technique. Um, I'm not sure how I'd get on with it myself, actually, to be honest. I always like the idea of tattoos, though, so I never say never. But I think. For me, I'd want to pencil sketch everything on top of the person first. I can't imagine something like my techniques I use for drawing would translate that well 
to tattoo techniques. Don't know. Um, does Demon Steel Stirrup work in older zones? Consensus is we're not sure. I certainly don't know. What does the Demon Steel Stirrup do? Does that make you uh, your mount go faster? I've ended up making this quite deep around here. I'm not sure whether that was quite how I intended it, but I'm going to go with it now because obviously I can't rub it out. And I'm just going to see what I can do with this shape. And now this is actually, this is quite dark in comparison to this. So what I'm going to do is actually make some shapes like this to, to change the irregularity of it. And then I can put it in like a plane, like a flat plane um, here to give that a slightly different look to it. It's just catching some light up here. But I want to give this a bit of uniqueness to it. Probably around there as well. Just use the lines. To pull that ring out a little bit more. Like that. The sky, sky Golem for Herbing, yeah. Got a Hunter Mining, and your Druid has all tailoring. Ah, oh, okay. Alright, okay, there we go. Uh, could draw a picture on a piece of tracing paper, then use um, deodorant on the skin, and stick the drawing skin side down, and it leaves a picture on the skin. Interesting, Rymok, I never knew that technique. That sounds cool. Kind of doing some cross hatching here for the shading because I think that works quite well in just giving that a bit of depth. But before I do any more of that, I think this this area behind here needs a bit of definition because it's kind of gotten a bit lost in some of the shapes here. So I'm going to pull that up because that's coming down. And then this is coming across. which gives me some lines to work on all the way down here. So I'm going to use the same kind of cross-hatching technique just to pull that in and then you do the opposite in lines this way. So it gives it a little bit of texture at the same time as doing the shadows and the lightness like that something like that um, the new engineer mount isn't buying on pickup anymore interestingly you only know because you've done it yourself <laughs> excellent Rymop that sounds like fun I'd have to give that a go sometime just to see how it looks Right, we're losing the edge here slightly, so let's just try and clean that up and then maybe give it a bit of detail. And this we need to now 
give it a little bit more. I'm going to keep this edge clear and make this a little bit patchy because then you've got the idea of burnished metal like um, galvanized almost. by keeping some edges clear and others dark. That will help accentuate one whilst keeping another light. It gives it a bit more depth really. And then we've got this whole section here to think about. I haven't actually seen the, uh, the new engineering mount, uh, Jack, so uh, I'll look forward to seeing that. What actually is it? Is it mechanical? There's the head, isn't there? Um, like that rare drop head. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So tr a tradable one of those will be quite cool. It's like an updated version of the head, isn't it? So I'm going to do that, and then another version here. I'm going to keep that apart. And then maybe just pull this down. A little bit. If I can get that corner sharp, then that gives me a nice clean line here and then I can do the same up there which means this line here could really do with being sharp as well that defines that whole edge that way something like that. So it could become the new Sky Golem. Yeah, but for ore. Yeah, that's a Mimron's head. Ah, and it seems you can farm ores with it. Ooh, now that's interesting. Yeah, I think I would definitely uh, pick one of those up. Because something for mining that makes that easier will definitely be useful. Definitely. I like that they're adding new things like this in to BFA to make things a little bit easier. I just hope they have a mass disenchant or a, uh, a means of speeding up disenchanting. That, that'll be the icing on the cake for me. You'll sell one to me. <laughs> Excellent. Cool. Special price. Only double. Now I've got quite a big space here. I'm wondering whether to incorporate, you know we've got these swirly things here. There, there's no space for them on the design on the actual drawing. But I've got a bit of space here myself so I could probably draw one in to give it a bit more um, a bit more sort of elvishness. like that and I can work around that design a little bit more and then maybe just this is a this is kind of flat so I want to do a flat area with highlights and we could incorporate that into the um, the elvish design actually by making that light and then dark so it looks a bit more grooved can I clear out that side doing echoes of the same design but in shading that will give us something interesting in this side. Um, 
don't want to lose the overall shape though. So you just have to keep keep working into it. And then again keep that line. Now shadow or highlight. I think shadow here. Take that down. Deciding whether that was deep, low down, or flat. I'm going to go with flat so that then I can pull this, this line around to give me a more highlight here to accentuate that. And then this one, I'm going to do a little bit lower around there. Just thinking of the overall sort of uh, shape and shadow of this at the moment. Let's pull this darker. And then we can do a nice dark line there. And this is going to catch some light, so that needs to be dark there. More contrasty. So if I do it more contrasty, then that's, that's going to help define that. But then I have to also do this line here. So that this top edge needs to really catch the light by comparison. But if I break this up a little bit like that, it's not quite so neat. It gives it a bit of a dented feel to it slightly. And then this whole section can be just toned down a little bit. So I'll just pull that down a bit more. Um, oh, thank you, uh, Stroya. Very kind of you. Hey, Willie Gnome, how are you? Used to do paintings on Photoshop and drawings of people as cartoons. They're excellent. Um, I I love uh, I love Photoshop. I used to have one of the um, Cintiq companions, so you could draw on the screen. And for me, that was the ultimate way of use, doing drawing and Photoshop at the same time. I always get a uh, when I use a graphics tablet and looking at, at the screen rather than. Um, looking down at what I'm drawing, I always get that disconnect. And I never quite draw as well when I'm doing that. But when it comes to Photoshop, I absolutely love using Photoshop. And let's just pull in a bit more. Do you want to get this, uh, this back? edge just a little bit darker so we've got some depth going on here but keep that keep that light and keep that a bit darker as well maybe just pull that down a little bit more I'm trying to think general shapes and layers with this, really. You like the face on my picture better? It has more of a wall feel than the other one. The the reference one, this one, um, is quite a floofy, um, liony kind of one. I thought, whereas I was going for more of a sort of a, a sleeker design with this one.
Now I need to think about how I'm going to just edge this in slightly by taking some shadows down and highlights across like so. Those are the kind of lines I want to catch. And now I'm going to keep this lock quite light. I mean, what I can do is with my eraser just make sure that this stays light, almost where it's glowing. So I'm just trying to push the lines out very slightly. Trying not to smudge this because that's the glowy bit, which means the rest of this is darker. So I'm going to follow this line. Uh, this does is going to go quite dark, so I can probably afford to just tone that down a little bit. just to try and keep those lines in there. I don't want to lose the shape that I roughly uh, drew out earlier. So if I can just pull it back into shape with some sharper lines, then that gives me some design cohesiveness is the word I'm looking for. I'm leaving patches of light around here so that it's got some more depth to it. And then trying to pull this in more so. Keep the outline there and do the same here. Just give it some more shading. almost patchy in a sense. Keeping that, that shine there is good for making it look like it's metal. You see how that goes dark and then stays light and then goes dark again. That gives it the kind of metally feel. And I want to keep this area, this side light because that's going to catch the light a little bit. But I also want to Do this as if it's engraved a bit more. So I'm going to do it darker on these sides. And then darker on this side. So that's that's got a bit of lightness over the top. You see how I've gone darker around there and then darker on underneath to try and make that ping out a little bit more. Something like that. Right, I'm going to just have a quick bio break. So I shall uh, leave that, make myself another coffee and then I shall return in, in a minute. Hold on one moment.
we are. We're back. Okay, we're back. Let me just manoeuvre myself inwards a little bit more. So this, this area, let's move that a bit there. So this area was the, the kind of intricate area. Which, now that we've done that, we can probably... I'd like to go back and do some more fur bits. And I can always come back over this with another layer. This section here is screaming out. I want to be shaded in to me. So I'm going to do this next. See if I can pull some nice fur designs and do the fur within the fur. So it's finding, finding where those extra clumps come and then drawing them in, making sure I've got some sharp lines to give it some depth and texture. Those are the main things thinking about whilst doing this. And also to try not to smudge my drawing, which is the other main thing. Oh, I can hear my phone going. Excuse me a moment, uh, I'll reply to that. getting updates from my family as uh, they're out and about today so I'm getting updates as to how they're getting on which is nice to hear so we're doing fur bits doing other bits down like this and then this one this is a nice big floofy area that I'm going to split up into different sections so that it's just not one big thick chunk but it has the the feel of one thick chunk that's grown out of itself actually got any uh, fur down here actually cleanly defined so I'm just gonna make it up as I go along down here to see what kind of shapes come out because I'm obviously working at a slight angle here um, my sense of where the light direction is coming from isn't quite so keen so what I'm going to thinking about instead is uh, the base being dark like I know that's going to be dark because it's in shadow and then the tips are going to be lighter so that's about my only real mental guide as to where where to go heavy and dark and where to go light well I think for this purpose it works absolutely fine and then I can when I turn it back up, I can have a look and see where I need to put in some extra shadow. That's that's the theory, anyway. Just 
just want to pull pull the details out based on my initial fur designs so I don't lose those details but also we get loads and loads of extra texture coming through see I'm not sure how that's going to form together so I'm just going to think of how would fur flow see we've got a nice, a nice curvy bit there, I quite like that so I'll see if I can incorporate that a bit more the other thing to think about is shininess, how glossy is this fur I mean are we going full on again grey main cinematic well conditioned fur or are we going to go a little bit slightly more scraggly I've been running through the branches of a bush and I'm completely sort of matted kind of fur I think probably a combination of the two. Alright, let's have a look. See what that looks like on the correct way up. So we've got some light bits here that probably need to be toned down, but then we've also got some depth here which we can probably pull even deeper. And this bit down here needs to actually be quite a bit deeper because we want this to be in shadow. So I'm just going to pull, pull that down a little bit more and work in those shadows darker. Try and smooth out some of those lines. And I can look at the camera give myself a separate view something like that and then let's think okay where's where's this def definition going because it's it's coming out but also I think it could do with being broken up a little bit so I'm just going to pull this line over the top because I've got some other fur coming down here I just want to split that up a little bit like that so it's it, it um, that's going to fold into where this strap is a bit more like that. Alright. Hey Lazy Coffee, how are you? Thanks for stopping by. How are you doing today? Looks awesome. Thank you very much. Very kind of you to say so. We're having fun drawing floofy main fur at the moment, which is uh, one of my favourite parts I think of doing this drawing. I mean I love drawing big cats anyway. So this, this is a good extension of that, certainly. I want to pull... This This is kind of lost in terms of, okay, where where is this strap going in? Because this is arm... Has this arm got an actual... Uh, let's have a look. So this is obviously completely um, just folded in because of the textures and the low polygon detail, which isn't how isn't how a body would actually go. So looking at this, we want to elbow, um, there's the elbow, there's the elbows coming up here behind this blade. The baseline is coming up here. And then that bit of armor is over the top there. So we want that line there and that armor line here. So those are kind of important definitions for this section for the leg. You're good, excellent. I'm doing very well, thank you very much. I'm just uh, enjoying my chill creative Saturday, which is always fun. Yeah, definitely fun to draw. Uh, no, nothing about drawing, but I think it looks very good. Oh, thank you, Bark too. It's very kind of you. 
<laughs> you know lots about drawing, Lazy Covey. I've seen you draw. Um, okay, so okay, let's just have a look at this. We're looking at this um, this blade here that's sticking out, which, to be honest, is pretty dangerous to be having on your elbow with these spikes because you're not going to be able to use it as a weapon unless someone pounces on you and you're crouched down and then this spike is going to stick up and you can't use it as a weapon yourself because cats aren't really haven't got the flexibility to twist their shoulders around and elbow someone so you're more as likely to actually stab yourself in the side with these blades than anything else so they are totally impractical. Let's stick this one up here. But hey ho, let's uh, stick with the design. Mine's slightly different to the one on the sheet. So I'm just going to carry on um, with my design. And then pull in details from the other one. So that's coming round. We've got a lot of extra details in here. So I'm going to pull this round and then pull that round and then the actual. So excuse my speakers going off. My phone's next to my speakers and they're clacketing away. And then this one wants to come up here with a line in there. And then I can do this down and tuck it behind this one. Or I can go there and then we can pull this up and then this blade for want of a better word. It is kind of a blade, I guess. I could make it more stone-like, I guess. That's the, that's the base shape we've got. <laughs> You're learning. We are all learning laser curvy. I'm learning too, so we can all learn off each other. Um, so, therefore, where's this section going to go? There's a, there is like a block here that comes out and back in. So maybe let's keep that. And then it comes out here. And then down as a chunk. which means that will probably pull in there and this can tuck underneath and then I'm going to actually do a little extra bit here which isn't in the drawing but I quite like that coming out so that this can come down underneath give it some sense of extra layers um, They've got just two layers here. Um, I'm actually going to go in for three to give this some depth. So if I do that and then that and then this blocky line down here can give that a sense of a base. Pull that down, and then this is kind of free. I mean, I've got a bit much bigger gap between this whole shoulder area compared to this one on the drawing. The drawing, the space here is so much shorter. Um, but that was one of the things I wanted to do with my version, 
was to give it uh, slightly longer and more elongated limbs. Ah, Great Lynx. Love the name. Thank you ever so much for the follow. That's a very apt name for, um, for this today's stream as we're doing a cat drawing. So I'm thinking something like that because I want to make this and then this is coming in over the paws so it's going to be more out and then along and then um, this bit sticks out more with a design that folds in on itself a little bit like that kind of making it up a little bit, using the other drawing as a reference. Not drawing, the other, the, the model viewer reference. That way that comes up. That comes in. And then these big spikes, claw spikes, which are extensions of the claw, because the, the pad will actually just, if you took this away, cat's claws don't come out this far. And this is actually really impractical for a cat to run with. It would be, it, you know, way, that's why cats have retractable claws, is so that they can pivot and they don't need to have their claws out for when they're running. And this is just completely impractical. But hey, if that's the design that Blizzard have gone for, which is accentuate Accentuate the uh, the cloriness, and then that's going to come round. These are tucking inside. I'm going to give these a bit more of a design like that, so I can then come across with my top end, and then this can come round as one chunk, and then. We can do a design like that. So that's the that's the shape. Hey, great. Uh, get links. Your your French, okay? Um, your English is very bad. Um, you speak a little um, a little English. Well, um, let me try my French. Um, I don't know. Welcome. Um, Bonjour, get links, ça va? Right, okay, so we're gonna pull this round. I like this design, this one here, because it goes sharp like that, and then folds back in on itself, but with a really nice angle to it. Something like that. And then we'll go there and then this this design, this guy, is coming right down all the way round. But we're keeping kind of sharp corners with it because then it pulls back on itself with a slight sharpness and then round but the whole thing is, is actually quite thick so we're going to pull that out Pull that out. Give this some extra extra lines. I want that quite thin and then come out to there. And then this one to come in 
and then out again there. So it gives me gives me that that kind of druidy druidy. No problem, uh, get links. That was actually the the limit of my French anyway, so um, I can't speak that much French, unfortunately. <laughs> you hate disenchanting. Oh, I'm with you there, uh, Sherbet. Absolutely, it is frustrating. Um, it just taking so long between each one, really, more than anything else. Hey, lifted up. How are you? Thanks for stopping by. Hmm. It's definitely painful. Now, whilst I've done this one, I think what I really need... Just gone back from work. Ah, welcome back. I hope you had a good... a good time at work. And now you're back for some... nice World of Warcraft time. Hopefully. Or just chilling and relaxing. Whichever suits you. Just, I haven't actually done much blue pencil drawing with this, so I'm just running off of the sketch, um, not the sketch, the WoW model viewer for this for this version. Oops! There goes my mouse. I want that, and then hmm. This is it's good because I've changed my 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 paw. This is all hidden here, whereas I want mine to be visible. So I need to make sure that I've got this part of the armor also visible. Otherwise, it's going to look strange. So I'm going to make it up as I go along here with some more armor pieces, as if. We've got the shape here. Because that's the joy of being able to do this made up. That way, that way I can do the design I'd like. And then I'm going to do a bit of fur. You know how fur just ticks out slightly, it goes smooth where you want it to and then just into there. That's all going to be fur. This is all going to be design. And then we've got the same claws, but from the other side. So that one comes up there. That one's going to tuck behind there. Something like that, and then this comes up and in, in, and like that. So there's the two, the two, the two feet. Thank you, uh, thank you. Lift it up and uh, and get links. Thank you very much. Um, got to make um, homework, but wow, it's more tempting. <laughs> yes, yeah, that is that is the temptation. Make those a little bit bigger, I think. Just kind of uh, accentuate those. And then we've also got the mane coming along. We've also got a few other features we need to think about. Is we've got the the back stripes, which I definitely want to keep. Just say Liffy, must be easier. Ah, I don't mind. And um, some some ones are, are easier to say than others, but uh, yeah, I'll go with Liffy if that's if that's how you prefer it. You need a mass mill bracer skill. Yeah, definitely. Um, a mass disenchant of some kind would make it so much, so much easier. What am I going to do here? 
I want these stripes, definitely, at the back. So I'm just going to lightly, lightly put them in. Just to give myself a reminder that there's going to be some stripes at the back. For something like that. Just so I've got them in. There we go. We all see it in progress? Yes, yeah, thank you. This is what I enjoy about doing things like this on stream. It does take a long time to do, but it's nice. Um, happily wait a few hours to send them all on a mission to be disenchanted. That's a good idea. Yeah, something like the, um, the garrison workshop or something like that. You could take it there, put in a work order, and they come back later. Yeah, I like that idea. I think that would work. And just check on my prayers. Right, okay. Now, choices, choices. We could do more. I think I'd do some more of this main fur because then we've got a roundedness to the whole back area. So, what I'm going to have to do here is just cover the paper up a little bit so we can draw without smudging. Now, the main shapes. I still want to keep these tufty things. Keep my my ledges, ledges, my edges, and my lines clean. But also, we want to do more inside with even more texture. means then going over this larger area with smaller ones and then just nudging in those. I've got to be careful not to go and break that line. That's a nice hard line that one which helps define the armour. If I go breaking that up then you lose that illusion of the hard line. So I want to just make sure I keep that. Keep my light edges, which represents the fur getting lighter at the end. But I also want to work in my graduations, because then that gives me the depth that I want. So I'll pull those in and then we can work on some more layers of depth with trying to keep that flowiness sometimes go this way, sometimes go that way and then you end up with a peak like that so you can then pull that out by just going around it and then you've got a, a, a nice fur tuft within the tuft That's what helps it look a little bit shiny and and give it some depth at the same time. And then this. 
this one. Again, gonna be tricky just to keep those lines. Just in the edge. And then this one, thicker one. Well, there's some nice lines there coming actually. Accentuate those, like those. That one's looking a bit snubby, so we'll try and taper that one off. A bit of dark there, and then take that out. And then this needs to be really tight in there. All right, so we've got the, the tuft fur coming just out the edge there. Um, oh, we've got some, got some nice bits there. I'll keep that. Keep that. That's nice, like that. And then let's do a bigger tuft there with a little nice second tuft next to it. And then I want to throw in some longer, thinner ones. Because you've got the fat ones and the thin ones. So that gives you some um, texture variation. And then just flow it around so that it's not just straight. Always got to think about the, the curviness of this. And then I can do some more, more lines in here. And then fill it out by just pulling this down, flicking the pencil out to do those those bits this is this is going to tuck behind the arm so this section here can actually be quite dark because the arm which I'm just keeping the edges of here is going to stay light, so we've got some shadow and some light going on here. I just need to make make some tufty areas along the back of the fur here, and then work it back into the mane. So sometimes I'm going around like this, and then sometimes I'm going around like that to give me my two different curves. Then I try and join them up with a point just to get that sense of fur uh, going along like that. Um, now I should work back up, just fill in this gap area here. That's that's the that's the design I want. So let's just darken that off right at the base because the fur's coming out. And then now the fur's coming out this direction from the back. So I can do just little flicky motions because I really want to keep that sharp line. Down there. And then just pull this back into a clump because we've still got that that clump defined there, which I like. So what I'll do is I'll go behind it with a darker clump, which is deeper and in shadow. And then I can keep that tuft out in the highlights. And then the same with this one. We're gonna just go a bit darker underneath there. And then let's just flick this lot out like that. And we know that that's going to be deeper underneath. But this, because it's layered, is also going to be deeper with the tip being lighter. And then we can do 
coming down, changing the direction of my stroke. Sometimes I flick out this way and then sometimes I go back the other way, which is a slightly more considered stroke line as opposed to the the flicky one which is more trying to keep keep those curves going. And then I can work my way back. This is rolling round the back of the mane. So I'm going to think about this being quite a bit darker to give it some depth. That way I can work all the way back. Although then that's getting backlit by the uh, the light on the other side. So it doesn't have to be completely dark. But it does give it that sense of depth. And then we can do this base again because this is being squashed down by the armour. I want to keep that line there, because that's the armour line, that's straight. But underneath is fur, so that's being pressed down and coming out, which is why I'm doing all those super dark bits. And then I can come back out with that. Now it's looking a little bit cartoony with those light bits right at the edge. So what I can do is go back over it with some more crossing overs and just try and smooth those out so they're not completely one than the other. Just break up those white lines a little bit. I still like those light tips. Um, I think they're, I think they're useful, but I do want to just uh, have it looking a little bit more realistic than it is. So that means just breaking them up, so they're not quite so stylized. And just layer this in a bit deeper. This is all going, this is all behind. I'm probably going to do lots of short strokes for that area because the fur's, the fur's not as long along the arm. So we can just, are we running low on pencil lead? There we are. Let's pull that out a bit more. Pull that back a bit more. So half closing my eyes and thinking about the light and the depth. So trying to get this looking a bit more tied together. A bit like I did with this one here. Do the same here. I want the light and the dark. I don't want to get lost in the design, but we also want to keep this metalness of the armour separate from the, the floofiness of the fur. So we definitely pulled out a lot more on that one. Okay, right. Quick slurp of the coffee. So this strap, this strap is carrying on here, but I've broken it with a bit of a bit of fur coming across. So what I'll do is just give a hint of the strap coming down here, but then I'm going to break it up with more more fur, probably darker as well. Oh, thank you, Liffy. Very kind of you to say so. I really enjoy doing fur drawing fur. The key is to make sure that you don't do it all the same. So like the main fur and the face fur are very different. The, the fine the fine fuzzy fur 
versus the big clumpy bits. Just going to keep working on it and working my way down. Hey, Emery, how are you? How did your 11 hour stream go? Not 11, 12 hour stream go. Were you getting tired towards the end? I hope it went well. Emery's alive. Thank you very much, Emery. It went amazing. Excellent. Good to hear. Good to hear. Glad I was able to catch some of it. It's nice when people stream during the day, during my work hours, because uh, I can at least catch some other streams then. Because obviously when I'm streaming myself, it's hard to catch other people's streams, as you well know. Who so survived? <laughs> Absolutely. Good to hear it. I'm looking a little wolf-like, but I'm all right with that because this is feral after all. So we can be we can be a bit scraggly. Did you catch my picture? It was amazing. Thank you very much, Emery. Kind of you to say so. I'm doing short, shorter strokes, a bit like these ones, but even more so. Could probably just extend them a little bit though from where I'm at. Yeah. You made about 50 pancakes. Ooh, nice. Nice. Did you eat them all yourself? Or were they for other people? I must admit, when you said you were going off to make pancakes, I was thinking. Now oh, that's a fine idea. Luckily, no. <laughs> All right, don't want to lose that line. That line's important. The same as this. Ah, oh, Jay the Bard, thank you ever so much for the follow. Thanks for stopping by. How are you this fine Saturday? I'm assuming it's early hours in the morning for you, because I think you're US, aren't you? Forgot to give me the follow from last time. Well, thank you ever so much. It's very kind of you. Did I have two things pop in then? I've got two sounds. Ah, Cthulhu, the raid. Thank you ever so much. How are you? How was your stream? Hold on, I've lost my mouse, so I can't see where that was. Uh, there we go. Oh, thank you, because it's very kind of you to say so. We're just uh, ticking away at this one. Um, I'm enjoying the process on this one, more so than anything else. Just getting ready to hit the bed. Oh, well, thank you ever so much for stopping by, uh, Jay. And thank you, Cthulhu, for the raise. Very kind of you. Um, been a busy day. People love the cover song. Oh, fantastic. I've not... Um, is that the same one you did at um, BlizzCon? Or um, have you done a new one? I must check it out if that's the case. If people aren't familiar with Jay the Bard, Jay the Bard is the fantastic person. Oh, and congratulations on your NPC, by the way. That's fantastic. Jay's actually got an NPC in Battle for Azeroth named after him, which is awesome. Well deserved. So congratulations on that one. No worries, Bart 2. No worries at all. Um, this cover you did for Invincible Cover and Blizzard shared it on Twitter today. Ah, okay. I'm going to have to check that one out after the stream. Oh, I love, I love your... Um, your World of Warcraft uh, singing, it's awesome. It 
adds, an, uh, adds a nice dimension to it. It reminds me of my EverQuest days when there used to be bards running around on that. Well, apparently there's a GeForce Game Ready driver available. It's just popped up for me. I think I'll skip that for now. There we go. So, there we go. Uh, let's keep that line there. That's important. So, but we don't want it too thick. So we want to actually make that line with fur, which goes in this direction, which is opposite opposite way. Yeah, if you haven't checked out Jay the Bard, I do suggest. Uh, what's the best way for people to check you out? Is it on um, YouTube, um, Jay, or is it on? I can't remember. Do you actually stream as well? I don't think I've seen you stream, but I've seen you on uh, YouTube and Twitter, I believe. Feel free to link um, link your channel, if so. So I've not got access to the keyboard myself, but um, go ahead and link it so everyone can know where to find you. going to make these into bigger clumps so we're not just doing fine lines otherwise we'll lose that um, that nice clumpiness to the fur that we've got going on here uh, that's on Twitter and on uh, Jay the Bar's Tavern, excellent, thanks for sharing the links, that's cool so I highly suggest everyone, you go out and check Jay the Bard and enjoy the Enjoy the music. There we are. Uh, da -da -da -da. Got that on. I'm just going to work on this arm that's tucked behind here, but I want to keep those those bits there going. Like that. Something like that, I think. And then we're just going to carry on all the way around. Now, if I kept this all the same, this would look very, very similar. So I also want to think, okay, well, this is going to get darker. And so I'm going to vary up the texture, vary up the stroke length, and also the um, amount of hardness and pressure I put on whilst I'm going round, because that's going to give me a bit of depth to this. And I've also got some longer strokes in here, which I want to keep like incorporating so it doesn't all look the same and I've also got to think this is tucking behind this line so I've got to keep that line particularly sharp so I can go behind there but I don't want to rub along that line because that'll just make it one big thick line so we kind of start at the base and flick upwards and then fill the gaps. So that's the line there. And then we can work in between these two in a minute once I've done these. But I'm just defining those first so that that all works along like that. And then we can fill in the lines between here and discover some clumps at the same time. Like that. And then we can give the whole thing some more depth just by shading it in a bit more. Like that. Excellent, uh, Lazy Cuffy. I definitely concur on that. Jay has a fine voice for sure and very musically talented. 
First time doing a pet battle, now you see why they need to be level 25. Yes, that's very true. Um, I struggle with pet battles. I only did a few of them and then I thought, okay, I'm going to have to invest heavily on my time and my, um, my pet skills to do them. So um, I would definitely um, give it some time. I, I myself have stepped away from pet battles because um, there's so much other things I want to do first, like professions. But that's mainly because I'm focusing on the goal-making side of things for now. And then I'm going to just throw things in as I complete them. Because I've done things like the, um, the drain or flying now. Okay. Filled in that area. We're definitely looking more wolfish. Now that's partly because... I've gone quite scraggly with the fur and quite clumpy. And it's quite long, even here it's quite long. And the other thing is it's not very patterned, which is typical of a of, of a wolf type thing. Um, whereas a cat, especially uh, the big cats like um, the tigers and leopards, with all the rosettes and stuff they have going on, it does look a lot more... Um, you get a lot more sleekness going on. So maybe I've done too much on the, the tufty side of things, which is why it's looking a bit more wolf-like. So perhaps if I work towards here, I can think of it more like small... small fur like this, and work that towards the back so that it's not quite so um, tough like and we could also break these up a little bit I take some of those where it's got the big lines and I can just pull that back from the tufty side of things like that one if I break that one up put some extra lines in then we can maybe, same with these in fact, break it up and then it will probably be a bit more sleek as opposed to tufty. There's two different types there. And so if I, oh that's got, that's where the strap is, that's why that's there. I can pull this one across. I'm just layering over the drawing I've done already, but trying to add a bit more depth to it and try and change that feel of toughness with a bit more um, softer feline fur. I mean, my cat Oreo does have quite tufty and floofy bits, but he would only really look like this if the fur was slightly more... Um, I guess it, it's a bit greasy and coarser with wolves um, and dogs, which is probably why this is coming out like that. I need to think about it more sleek. Um, so I'm just going to pull this apart slightly and just tuck these bits in like that and try and keep some of that shininess going but also just tuck, tuck this away where it's broken up a bit more. So now we're getting a little bit softer is the theory that I can tone that down a bit more and tone that down quite a bit more. There we go, tuck that in there, there we go. Um, there is so much to do if you haven't played since forever. Yes, that's that's absolutely true. Um, oh, I've missed out on some more things further up, uh, like ten million things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's what I found, and especially as I'm sort of catching up too with the game because I had I had a break um, for 
for quite a few expansions. So coming back into it, yeah, there is so much to catch up on. I mean, even if you're, even if you've been playing for all that time, it's um, there is so much to do just in the regular game as one character. Then you've got all the alts, you've got all the alternative things you can do, and it really does um, add up in terms of the number of stuff you can do. And it can get a bit overwhelming at times. But just I just focus on the fun bits that and know that I'll never get it all done. I'll never be playing World of Warcraft 24-7. I just don't have that time. So I'll never do everything. Yeah. So just just pick the bits you can do and enjoy those is how I think of it. Yeah, impossible to do everything. Absolutely. Alright. There you go. Last bit of coffee. Okay, let's have a look through on the camera viewpoint. Definitely made some progress today. We got quite a lot of that shoulder armor and the main done. Break that up a little bit more as well. So it's not quite so tufty. Pull that in, pull that in. just trying to break that up a little bit. Something a little bit more like that, perhaps. and then tone that one down. So that's coming through and then that's staying dark, keeping that. That's alright. Uh, that can probably go a little bit darker. Let's just cross some extra lines in. Give that some depth. Maybe just take some of that whiteness out of the tips for some of it. Which gives me more, more to play with in terms of depth. Just pull that down, pull that down so that's darker. And that's coming out into the light, so that's going to stay there. That can probably be darker. Do that Oop, extra line there. Just incorporate it in. It's totally intentional. And then that one. You can just pull in. And pull that one down. Right. Okay, I think I'm probably going to wrap it up there. In terms of progress, I think we're, we're a fair ways on. Um, happy with that, we've obviously got the whole of the back end to do. Um, the claws we've mapped out at least so far. We'll need to map out the rest, the back end. I'm much happier with the way I've put the tail now, um, going deeper into the drawing as opposed to the way it was too close to the edge here so that's kind of pulled out a bit more so definitely uh, definitely progress um, in terms of when I'm on next is going to be tomorrow night 
Sunday night I'll be back to my usual World of Warcraft streaming. Um, we're very close to getting um, a thousand subscribers on YouTube, so if you haven't subscribed me already on YouTube, please do stop by, because uh, when I get to a thousand subscribers on YouTube, I'm going to do another art giveaway. I'll do that on um, I'll do that on YouTube itself. So I'll do one of those um, ones where I'll put up a video, and you put a comment in the in that video I put up, and I'll do I'll choose a winner out of that. So that's once I've got to a thousand subs, subs in YouTube, which is really close. So really happy with that. Um, thank you all for your support. Thank you everyone who's hung out today. That's been absolutely amazing. So thank you all for stopping by. Let's have a look and see if there's anyone we can throw a host over to. Um, I would say, who have we got on? Well, Mr. Grumpy Face, I haven't thrown a host over to her in a while, so let's throw one over to him. So he'll be playing World of Warcraft, I imagine. Um, let's have a look, see what he's up to. Let's make sure I mute the advert before it comes in. Okay, I'll let that run, and I'll throw a host on over. So yes, I hope you all have a good day. The rest of your Saturday is good, and you have an enjoyable weekend. Uh, da, da, da. Hey, Skitzio, yes, sorry, I'm just wrapping up. Um, the VOD will be on, um, on Twitch for the next 20, well, the next few days. And I'll put, after 24 hours has gone by, I'll put it up onto YouTube as well, so you can catch it there as well. But thanks for stopping by nonetheless. Um, making sure I've typed everything correctly. Uh, da -da -da, that, 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 that. Okay, so there we go. Yes, have to catch you again soon, uh, Skitio, but thanks for stopping by. Right, uh... Done that, done that. Right, okay. So, thank you everyone. Have a great rest of the weekend. Hope to catch you tomorrow, tomorrow evening, UK time. Um, and I'll do some more uh, gold making then. I'll put a scan, I'll scan this in and put it up on Twitter and Discord if you want to um, have a look at a more detailed copy of this. And I shall see you all very soon. I'm throwing a host over to Mr. Grumpy Face. I'll go send him some love and say hello. And um, we shall uh, see you again very soon.